American fridge, American bread, American bug attacking our country? Why do we call these things American when for American they don't need that adjective? Well, let us explain. Hi there, I'm an honest guy here in Czech Republic in Europe and this is my favorite series we have on our channel which is Cultural Differences. And why do we sometimes use the adjective American to things that are not necessarily American? Let me give you a first example and that would be a fridge. This fridge right here, even though it was made in Korea, is actually American. Or if I want to go buy it, if I go online, I will go into the section or into the aisle that says American fridge. Now you in US would refer to it as the side by side. Uh, we call it American, mainly because it's big and because it has the side by side door. So this we refer to as the American fridge because one half of it is fridge the other half is a freezer. But here is a funny part. This we still refer to as the American fridge. It's in the American fridge's aisle. But the top part is only a fridge. The bottom is freezer. So in US, they actually refer to this as the French door fridge. French doors are now the most popular style of refrigerator. So that demand also brings up the price a little bit. Samsung, Korean. Samsung, Korean, Korean, Korean. So much for America, huh? Now let's stay with these box-shaped objects that we refer to as American, but let's move from the fridge to a coffin. Yes, if somebody dies here and you wanna get them a coffin, you can go to the funeral home and say, I want an American coffin. Now the difference is that the regular coffin would be cheap and made out of cheap plywood, but the American is like solid, big, and has that opening where you can look at the dead person. Now in US, you'd refer to that as a casket. I actually didn't know the difference between a coffin and a casket. I thought they're synonyms, but the difference is that this is what a coffin looks like, and this is what a casket looks like. But we, to your casket, would refer as the American coffin. Now the only reason I can think of to get an American casket here is if you want to, want to have a funeral with the open casket, which I've actually never attended, never heard of, or never been to in our country. So I guess that's mainly an American thing. That's why therefore you would go to get an American coffin. Since we're already in the horizontal position, let's move from a coffin to a bet. More specifically, the American bet. You want to wake up like an American movie? Now, I'm actually quoting IKEA, the Swedish seller of furniture, and they sell American bets here. I mean, they sell regular bets as well, but what is an American bet? Well, it's a bet with the box spring base. Now, I didn't really know what the differences are, but there's a platform bet and a box spring bet. So the box spring bet, we refer to as the American bet. In general, uh, we're usually talking about something that's larger and quite uh, a bit higher. Now this is a regular potato, and this is American potatoes. Now what the hell is that? Well, it's actually a spice to use for potatoes to make them American. But before these turn into American potatoes, you also have to slice them and put them in the oven because we're making potato wedges. That's what you would call them in US, but we refer to them as American potatoes. And you can even go to the store and get the spices for it that are called American. One of the biggest cultural differences in a supermarket we noticed is that our aisle with cereal is tiny little. This is the only selection we have of cereal. I mean, on the other hand, we have automated robots that just kind of wander around. This wasn't planned. Anyhow, the aisle is actually much bigger as the sign says, but all of this is just healthy stuff. Like we don't have Fruit Loops or Lucky Charms and stuff like that. Like healthy cereal? Since we've already been to the supermarket to get the American potatoes, we also grabbed the American bread. Now what is that? It's a regular sandwich bread that we usually refer to as the toast bread, but it has American flag all over it because it is much wider and larger in size than our toast bread. I mean, you can clearly 
see the difference, right? This one is also like fluffier. I prefer this one. This is the regular Czech one, but not regular Czech European bread. Our normal bread is much better and nicer. So this is the American uh, bread. We even have the you know flag on it and stuff. This is actually a Czech company that makes it. Uh, this specific one is made in Germany and the company is owned by a Slovak guy who used to be our prime minister. Now he didn't invent the packaging and the fact that it's an American bread. He actually copied it from an Austrian company, Ertz, that is a family Austrian company that first brought this to our market. Also, they sort of marketed it as an American sandwich bread. So this guy saw it and he copied it. And uh, you Americans are now just like, what? I thought you guys eat baguettes. No, that's the French people with the fridge. Now the next one is quite interesting and it is the American Knight. Now it is the name of a film, of a movie, a French film actually, uh, but it is a term used when you turn day into night. And it was specifically used during photography or filming First time it was used was in the film Wizard of Oz. And the reason they used these techniques back in the days is because they didn't have good cameras to film uh, during uh, evenings or low lights. So they had to film during the day, later turning it into night. Right now you're looking at me uh, with two lights and some daylight and Hamza can put a filter in the final cut that will turn this day into night. Uh, even if you go on Wikipedia, there's an article about it in English. It's called Day to Night. In the other languages, it is called American Night. Now, I actually thought that the term American Night is used because it is fake, uh, because it's pretending to be something that it's not. Uh, but that's not the case of American Night. It is the case of the American Smile. Uh, and I honestly don't know if you would say that as an American, that somebody has an American smile, probably not, but we say that a lot. And it can mean two things. Either your smile is perfect, you have the perfect teeth, perfect smile that almost hurts, it's like cringing. Uh, and the other term that I would use it for is that your smile is fake, that I just don't believe you're actually smiling, nor you care how I'm doing. If you still don't understand what the American smile is, let me show you a Czech film that is sort of a parody on the police academy where a famous Czech actor explains it. Americký usměv. No, keep smiling. Zuby, zuby. Americký. Whoa, man, you bought America? That's awesome. Now, what did my friend buy? I know. In our language, if he would call me and he'd say, man, I just bought America, he would be referring to a car. Either an old classic American car, like an Oldsmobile or Pontiac or something like that, or simply a big, large car. There's one more thing uh, that you can refer to uh, as America and not use it as an adjective, but as uh, a noun actually. But for that, we would have to go back in time uh, to the communist era when we were behind the Iron Curtain and probably go uh, to see my dad at a university where he would say like, oh man, he has Americas. Can I have one? And obviously they were referring to cigarettes uh, that were very special if somebody got their hands on American brand cigarettes. It was something special and they would not refer to them as whatever the brand was, but as Americas. American. Now, since we're already back in time, let's go take a look at another American thing. And I believe we have some historical footage. These clouds are not bringing joy and happiness because they are from the West. With the help of the wind and the clouds, the American imperialists send the Colorado potato beetle onto our country. The father and the son noticed something little on the ground. They leaned down to pick up something from the road. That's it, the American bug. <laughs> American bug. Now, since I did not live during communism and during these horrible propaganda times when people were brainwashed that West is sending this evil creature to destroy our potatoes, I never associated the adjective American with this poor little beetle. But when I asked my parents or even older people, uh, what do they associate American with? They said, oh yeah, during the propaganda times, they would always refer about the beetle as American. That's where the term American buck comes from. Now, last but not least, and we have to talk about this topic, 
is the American football. Uh, now, what you call football is not football because you're not using your foot nor a ball to play it. You're actually using an egg-shaped uh, object and you're playing with your hands. Therefore, it should be called hand egg or egg hand. You decide, but not football. That's why we refer to your funny game as American football and our football is what it is. Now, the adjective American usually means good or better or something special. There's even a Czech, famous Czech movie where the actor is asking another uh, actor, if I put two identical matchboxes in front of you and I would say that one is from uh, America, the United States, which one would you pick? And he says, well, of course, the American, it has to be better. And I'm curious to ask you Americans, and I know many of you are watching, do you have the same thing with Europe? If something is from Europe, do you consider it to be better quality, better taste, better something? Are there things that you refer to as European that we wouldn't understand why? I actually discussed this with my American cousin and she said that uh, there's butter that they refer to as European or yogurts or bread. So I'm curious if there's more things that we would be surprised that you refer to as European. I'm very much looking to the reactions uh, in your comments to today's video. Uh, while you're down there, you can subscribe to our channel. We will bring you another cultural differences. We may talk about uh, things that are hard to get in this country or things that are hard to get in some other country. So let us know if you would like to see that. Until then, next Sunday, bye-bye. In the end, I usually teach a Czech word. This time I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna show you a cultural difference that may shock you when you come to Europe. And that is that you can't just Grab a shopping cart, they're locked. Well, how do you get it out? Well, you need a coin. What if you don't have a coin? Well, then you need a European type key. And if you happen to have that rather than a coin, you can just put it in, pull it right out, and the shopping cart is yours. It's a neat trick that uh, I was teaching here on this spot in a show I was doing uh, prior to The Honest Guide, which was called uh, You're Poor, How to Get a Shopping Cart for Free. And we filmed that with Honza. So this is the trick. And in Czech, this is nákupní vozík, but we would always say vozík.